Today we shall start off with the first topic of plus physics plus 2, electrostatics. Electrostatics uh, is also well, popularly known as static electricity. Static electricity. Static electricity should understand the term static stands for at rest and this electricity comes from the word electron. Now, let's start our topic with common experiences. Uh, most of us have this experience and when we rub a cone in a dry hair we find that this comb acquires a typical characteristic of attracting small bits of paper or straw. Similarly, uh, when we rub a polymer ruler or the common ruler or the scale that we call on our shoulders or the sleeves, we find it also acquires the same property. The strange thing, before rubbing, it did not have that property. So, it acquired that property after rubbing. So, there is something or somewhere this rubbing is very important. Therefore, rubbing is associated with friction. Let us come to the details of it why this phenomenon happens. We all are aware that substances are made up of atoms and atoms invariably contain two sets of one set of charge positive and negative the positive ones centered at the nucleus called the protons and with electrons the lighter ones revolving around. Now, every atom naturally has equal positive and negative charges. What happens if this equality of charges gets disturbed? Suppose let us say the number of positive charge decrease and the number of negative charge remains same. So, there will be an excess of negative charges and a less number of positive charges. We call this situation to be charged. But the problem arises that the positive charges are deep inside the atom, inside the nucleus, very heavy, tightly packed, very difficult to remove. Then what should be the next step? If an electron can be removed by some means, let's say any means, what happens is again there is a disturbance of the neutrality. And in this case, the atom acquires excess of positive charge or excess number of protons. Thus, again, this becomes charged. So, it's easy to remove electrons rather than protons simply because of the fact that protons are deep inside the nucleus, very heavy, very tightly packed but it's very easy to remove electrons. How do you remove electrons? It's not chemistry, so removal of electrons from one atom to other, we are not going into chemical details. Here these electrons can be removed as we know that if you supply certain amount of energy, this electron can be removed and this energy can be inputted in various forms. Suppose we have a glass rod and we rub it with a silk cloth. Silk cloth, rubbing with glass, there is a friction, work done against friction, heat developed. If this heat developed is sufficient enough to remove electrons from either of these materials, then I, though that material will definitely become charged. In actual practice, what happens is, when you rub glass rod with silk, some electrons 
are removed from the glass rod. We'll come later come to this part later that uh, where does this electron go? But the heat developed in rubbing, work done against friction, is enough to remove electrons from the glass rod. Thus, the glass rod becomes charged. That's, that is why this topic is also commonly called as frictional electricity. There is no other way you can remove electrons but without inputting any energy. Fine. So, we are now in, at a stage that when we know that a body can be charged by rubbing it with some other materials. What if someone asks me if glass rod is rubbed with cotton cloth? No, when glass rod is rubbed with cotton, it doesn't get charged. It's not charged. If you have a glass rod and if you have cotton cloth, no, it won't get charged. Why? The simple reason again is the coefficient of friction between cotton and glass is so very less that the work done and the heat developed is not enough to remove electrons neither from the glass nor from the cotton. So, nothing happens. The heat simply gets dissipated or transferred from one body to the other. Other examples, ebonite. The problem is you are probably not aware with what ebonite is. You find ebonite in the handles of your pressure cooker. Your switches, they are made up of ebonite. When ebonite is rubbed with fur, cat skin, the same thing happens, the ebonite rod gets charged. But here it's slightly different. Here electrons are not removed from the ebonite into the fur, rather fur donates electrons or electrons are removed from the fur and they are relocated into the ebonite. Okay, so we are now in a position to know that bodies do get charges, charged, gets charged when rub with suitable materials. This is very important, suitable materials. Anything and everything rub with each other, do not make it charged. Okay, now, how many types of charges can be there? Simple. If the number of electrons are less, then it is positively charged. And if the number of electrons are more, then it's negatively charged. Represented by the popular symbols of positive and negative charges. Positively charged means less number of electrons or electron deficient. Negatively charged means excess of electrons present. Fine. So, two types of charges are there. The next part is how do you charge a body and what are the values of charges? Okay. We know that electrons cannot be divided. For you at least, electrons are indivisible. If electrons are indivisible, that means in an atom, it's only possible for you to remove electrons in a whole. That means you can remove either this electron as a whole entity or you can add electrons to a substance, not to an atom, as a whole. You cannot divide electrons. Electrons are indivisible. That means, if you remove a single electron, an electron has a certain amount of charge, fixed charge. Let's 
not go into the details right now fixed amount of charge so if you remove an electron if it's possible for us to remove an electron we shall only be able to remove the charge or add a charge in a fixed amount that amounts to the amount of charge in one single electron if i am able to remove two electrons from this then obviously this atom will be deficient of two, elect two electrons and it will acquire a charge positive which is equivalent to two values of two electrons that means this will have an excess of two protons on the other hand if i am able to add certain electrons again by the same method of removal of electron from one body and input into the other then this will have excess of electrons and that too in whole numbers of the values of the charge of the electron this principle in fact is known as quantization of charge i hope you are aware of the word quantization quantization refers to a fixed value quanta and what is the quanta here quanta of charge between the one in this discussion we have found out the quanta of charge or the minimum value of charge that is possible at least for this level is the charge on an electron that means it's only possible to charge a body with values of integral multiples of charge on an electron either you can remove a single electron two electrons three four or n number of electrons you cannot remove one and a half electron you cannot add one and a half electron or fractions thereof thus any body if it's deficient of electrons it could be either one two three or in whole numbers if it's definite deficient then the charge could be shall always be positive we write it mathematically as this so the charge on any body can be plus n times the charge on an electron or if you can add electrons to it it will have excess of negative electrons that means it will have electrons in excess in integral values n becomes 1 2 3 4 and so on this principle is known as quantization of charge quantization of charge is important because when you want to calculate the number of electrons removed or added suppose if i say um, a body has a charge of say 3.2 coulomb coulomb being the unit of charge i want to find out if it's plus here in the unit plus is not added how many electrons has been removed or added plus sign signifies that the electrons has been removed that means the number of electrons from the above formula can be q divided by the charge on a single electron if we know the value of the charge on a single electron we shall be able to find out the number of electrons that are removed similarly if we have say minus 3.2 coulomb charge it simply means the number of electrons added to the system could be q by e this is the basics and the fundamental of any body which is charged now the which i shall conclude uh let some of things before we move on to the next part that is why do you how can you relate this thing statics electrostatic or rather let's say static electricity the electrons that are added if the body is negatively charged do not be mobile they are at rest this is the problem most of the students find where do these electrons go these electrons are located within the lattice i have a fundamental idea of lattice in chemistry studied lattices so these electrons cannot be mobile they cannot move around since they remain there 
they are called static hence the word static electricity in case if the electrons are removed that means we have positive seats with atoms having more number of protons which also are immobile in the lattice again the charges are immobile therefore they are static they are nowhere to go they cannot go anywhere they will remain within the body that is why we call it to be static electricity okay uh, you should go through this in your books if you wish to have a re reference <coughs> charges also interact with each other okay we'll come to this in the next topic for now let's sum up charges are of two types positive negative that less number of electrons more number of electrons and amount of charge in a body can be written as n times e e being the charge of a single electron n being whole numbers 1 2 3 4 remember n can never be fraction thank you